All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. What does God look like? If you were the most amazing artist that has ever lived and you could draw God, what would you draw? I'll give you a moment to think about it. I'm not going to ask you for your answers. And I'm after a picture of God, not of things that God might inspire in you. God himself. What would you draw if asked to draw a picture of God? It's a naughty question. The Jews were told that they must never ever make a graven image of God. It was the whole basis for their faith and it was what distinguished the Hebrews from the other people. All early people everywhere seem to have had deities. They made models of deities resembling something, an animal or a human, often a human with additional characteristics. And they went to that God and they prayed. This was what the God of the Hebrews told them never to do. Indeed, not only were they told never to make an image of God, but they were told, or they learned, or they decided not even to pronounce God's name. When we think of that moment when God spoke out of a fiery bush to Moses and he gave his name, I am what I am. Those words, I am, whenever they appear in the Old Testament, weren't put in Hebrew fully because what the Jews learned to do was to substitute another word, normally Lord, instead of Yahweh. That's why we were confused, and in fact we don't absolutely know for sure what that name was, because the consonants are there, but not the vowels. And there was a mistaken understanding for a long time that that word spelt Jehovah. But we've moved on from then, and most scholars agree that probably if they could pronounce the word of God, it would be Yahweh. But what it really means is, I am short for, I am what I am, or I will be what I will be. Always mysterious, never really knowable. So it was an unfair question, at least if we're thinking of the God of the Old Testament. But the main thing I want to ask you, given the pictures that you may have conjured up, if you haven't, go away and think about it. The God of the Old Testament, what does that God look like? Does that God have a happy face or a stern face? Yahweh is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful to those that fear him. So as a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful to us. I didn't quite get it right, but verses from Psalm 107. If they're familiar, more familiar than the words about the Psalms, you will have heard them over and over again at funerals. Yahweh is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. Because the Israelites often got things wrong, they felt, they were told, that God was angry with them. God was angry with the ways that they were disobedient. And I'm not here to set out to, to prove that, but disprove that. But what is important, that the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament is the same. And if we know our Old Testament well, we'll know again and again and again the idea that God is a compassionate, merciful and ever-loving Father permeates the Hebrew Scriptures. So if we get an impression of a stern God, it's always in the acknowledgement that God does not want to be like that. God wants to forgive. And Jesus was not the first person 
to call God Father, it was a psalmist. As a father has compassion upon his children, so is the Lord compassionate, merciful on those who fear him. God-fearing was a word that was usual. I must admit, like other priests, at funerals now, I tend to change that first reference to say, those who love him. And if you've read The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, and if you haven't, I urge you to do so, you will know that love and fear are not different things. But as Christians, of course, we look at the Old Testament through the lens of the New. Jesus is the human face of God. He found it very hard to explain that he had such an intimate relationship with the Father whom he knew to be a God of love. And a prime example of that is early, early on in the Gospel of John when Nicodemus first appears. He is completely confused about Jesus' relationship with a God that is of above and that as Jesus is born from above and breathes in God through the Spirit, which blows where it wills, so can everyone, so can Nicodemus. But it means being raised up to the heavenly places by that Spirit. And as Canon Nigel said in last week's sermon for Pentecost, in Aramaic and Hebrew and Greek, the same word was used for wind, for spirit and for breath. So when Jesus says to Nicodemus, the spirit blows where it will, it could be the wind blows, the spirit blows, or that breath blows. And if you look at your reading sheet, at that passage from Paul to the Romans about the spirit being within us, <coughs> searching our hearts and calling God our Father, we have that same idea. If God the Father ever seems remote, we need to look again at Jesus' words and at the words of St. Paul. Later on in that same chapter of the Romans, Jesus talks of the Spirit being within us, sighing in sighs too deep for words. Our prayers in the Spirit aren't necessarily made up of words, because if Jesus' Spirit is within us, and that's how John's Gospel puts it, I will send you my Spirit, an advocate, a comforter. That Spirit is what makes prayer possible and prayer real. I mention all of this, of course, because today is Trinity Sunday. I'm setting out to preach a short sermon because I'm hoping that lots of you will stay for our annual meeting, which I promise will also be as brief as possible. If we're going to draw God, the only way we can draw him, or she, or it, is by looking at the face of Jesus. One of the greatest of the 20th century Archbishops of Canterbury put it like this. He adapted a turn of phrase from the first letter of John, which says that God is light and in God there is no darkness at all, to say this. God is Christ-like and in him is there no unchristlikeness at all. So if we ever fear God, as we should, we should only fear God and love God in the way that we love our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who was lifted up as the same Moses lifted up a pole in the wilderness as an effective vaccination against a plague that had been wrought upon the Hebrew people because of their disobedience. As that staff was lifted up in the wilderness, so Jesus is lifted up on the cross. So let us stand to proclaim our faith in God, who is revealed as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.